Hi everybody, this video is a companion of the previous video about the quantum radar. The reason I'm doing this is because I realized through some messages that I got on Reddit, basically I haven't been clear. And uh, yes, I also made quite a bad mistake. So we measure the value of the property of one particle, then the other entangled particle assumes immediately at a speed faster, faster than the speed of light, faster, faster, faster. First, I speak about the connection at a speed faster than the speed of light, so-called spoken action at a distance. I mention this because, uh, yes, it's always mentioned, it's often mentioned, but no communication is happening faster than the speed of light. No information is transmitted anyway, this is a fallacy. And anyway, for the application you are interested in, which is the radar, it is utterly irrelevant. Entanglement, quantum entanglement, quantum and quantum correlation. They won't be entangled anymore. The higher the correlation, correlation. I made quite a large confusion between the entanglement and the correlation. The property that is used in the radar is the correlation. And for correlation, I mean time correlation. That is, the photons that are emitted are correlated in time. And this is the property that is used to mark the detection. The entanglement, which is necessary to create the correlation, actually decays pretty much immediately, just after the generation. Call one being the idler and find a way to store it locally. What I mentioned that it's difficult to store the idler locally because it's a ray of light that travels at the speed of light, I also should have mentioned that the speed of light in fiber optics, for example, is about 50% of the speed of light in vacuum. So one possibility is storing the idler in a loop of fiber optics and it's going to stay there for a while before coming out of on the other side. This incidentally is one of the technical challenges that I didn't mention, but not in the sense that it's difficult to store. The point is that the time delay that you have between the idler coming out from the fiber optics and the um, probe coming back from the rest of the apparatus is sort of governed by the length of the fiber optics. And this means that the distance at which you are probing is pretty much a fixed distance. So you need to do something, technically speaking, to probe at different distances. This is one of the practical problems, practical technology problems that haven't been resolved yet. Reflected probe and the idler interfere in the sensor. The light produced interferes in the sensor with the idler Another point that was 100% correct was that it was necessary to have the two beams interfere to have the detection. Well, this is true, but is not necessary. In the sense, it is also possible using single photon detectors like cascading diodes uh, just to measure the two beams separately and just measure the correlation between the two. Obviously, there are plenty of technology challenges. The first being the design and the construction of the converters. And now let's come to my mistake. This is actually a mistake uh, due to incomplete research, so apologies. Toward the end of the video, I say that the electromechanical converters are, uh, yes, a proposed technology, but we don't know if they really work. Uh, Maybe the Chinese made them work and so on. Well, it turns out it's not true. I mean, while their application in radars has yet to be proven and uh, we don't know exactly how the different teams are using them, they have been used already, they have been tested at lab level because they are key for communication in the neighboring field of quantum communication and quantum computing. They are basically going mainstream, they do exist, they work, 
and so this is my mistake. So it's a piece of technology that is already there, but still needs to be assembled into a radar. So, if you have to take away something from this video, you can take away that some of the technology that is required to build a quantum radar is existing, it's going mainstream, but there are still a lot of technology challenges, pra practicalities, bits and pieces that need to be fixed, and this is probably going to take some time. I hope you have enjoyed this rather humbling uh, video. Apologies again for the mistakes and for not being clear on some points. And thank you very much for watching and goodbye.